In chapter 15, we were looking at what was happening in heaven. Now, if you were watching a movie, you would be seeing those things that are happening in heaven. And at the same time, it would say what was happening on earth. So in chapter 16, we find the bold judgments are released on those who directly worship witchcraft. Now, you have to understand, I've written four books on the occult and how they affect families. And I've spent years studying the occult and how it affects our culture and everything. As a matter of fact, witchcraft is the fourth largest religion in, religion in America today. And so, you know, we were told that it's just make-believe. It's just fun, you know, just dress up like a witch. And there's not, riches are just make-believe. Well, witches are not make-believe. They're, they're very real. And so I found it quite fascinating as I was going through this particular chapter and finding the exact references to judgments on those what are called the elementals of witchcraft. So let's take a look at that. Now, I'm going to go through these and show you through pictures of what is happening in these bold judgments. One, there will, be mark, there will be boils all over people's bodies. The second one, the salt water sea will turn into blood. And then the waters that are, are uh, fresh water will turn into blood. And by the way, let me just tell you this, that uh, you can't last very long without fresh water. I mean, you can live without food for weeks, maybe even months. I probably could do pretty good without food for a while. But water, you have to have water. Within days, you will be dead without water. So when he turns the water, the fresh water, into blood, that's a very dangerous thing. Then we look, and then there's intense heat. You know, I was looking at this this morning, and, and uh, there were all this stuff about global warming and everything, the ozone layer, uh, how it had a hole in it. But now it seems to be healing up. But I don't know. Maybe God at this point removes the uh, ozone layer completely and causes tremendous heat. Then you go into the darkness. And then from the darkness you have the spirits, the, the, de the three demonic sp spirits that are, uh, are going to come out. And then you have hailstones. So let's start this. God uses the spirit of witchcraft to torment those who believe in witchcraft. Now, I think I need to show you what witchcraft means. Now, you make a mistake when you say witches are devil worshipers because witches are not devil worshipers. They don't even believe in the devil. That's a biblical term, and they don't believe in the Bible. Witches pretty much are into nature worship. And I've been talking about that over and over. All this climate change, all this thing about Mother Earth and Earth Day and everything else, it's not political, it's spiritual. And so I'm going to take you on a little trip and show you what witches do believe. And it's going to, it's going to be a little different than probably what you think it is. First of all, they believe in Earth, Mother Earth, and then fire and then air, and then spirit, and then water. Earth, wind, and fire. Hmm, sounds like a rock group. Well, I can tell you this, that Maurice White of that group does believe that he's an incarnate demon. Now, witchcraft, you'll see the pentacle. Now, the earth is the elemental of the north. Fire is the elemental of the south. Water is the elemental of the west. And air is the elemental of the east. Now, those are called directional spirits. Now, we do see in the book of Revelation that God places four angels to hold back his judgments until he seals the 144,000. So we do know there are directional spirits. But again, they're not the spirits that these people are praying to. Then we look at the different directional spirits, north, south, east, west. Where did you hear about that? Hmm. One of my favorite shows when I was growing up was The Wizard of Oz. Now, remember, Glinda was the good witch of the North. 
The wicked witch of the east, the house fell on her. The wicked witch of the west, well, she chased Dorothy the whole way. Now, who was the, oh, Dorothy was the witch of the south. That's the reason why the slippers uh, fit her feet and everything else. Now, what are you saying, Mr. Benoit? Are you saying that I can't watch? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that those who wrote that knew something about the elementals and the directional spirits. Now we have things like Captain Planet and the Planeteers where Gaia, Mother Earth, gives out all these uh, rings to these Planeteers. And then you've got Frozen 2. Now, you remember in Frozen 2 where they had the rocks moving, that was Earth, and the wind and the rain there. All those things were in Frozen 2. Pachamama, Pachamama, uh, it's, it's quite strange. The last airbender, I was at my sister-in-law's house and my nephews and my nieces were watching The Last Airbender. And all of a sudden I hear earth, wind, fire, water, and spirit right there. And even Disney in their new movie, Elemental, it's not a secret. They don't even make it a secret anymore. It's right out there. Revelation 16. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. So now we see that he's going to pour the wrath upon earth. Now we talked about that, earth. Earth worship, this extreme environmentalism, is the worship of Mother Earth instead of Father God. Even today, people are being conditioned to believe that the judgments of God, natural disasters, are the results of angering Mother Earth with climate change. See, it used to be when man would do wrong and God would judge him through famine, through pestilence and these things, they, they turn to God and say, oh God, I'm sorry, but not anymore. Because it's not God the Father that's created, it's all climate change. I mean, you look it up. Climate change is, it is the result of everything that happens bad is because man is polluting the air. I'm telling you, this extreme environmentalism basically is not just environmentalism recycling. It's deeper than that. Look at this. This proves my case. This is Time Magazine online, April 21st, 2023. The case for making Earth Day a religious holiday. <laughs> I don't have to say it. See, if you're watching me, you say, oh, that guy's a lunatic. Oh, that guy's an extremist. Oh, here comes another conspiracy. It's not a conspiracy. They say it themselves. Earth Day is not just about recycling, but revival of paganism. When you look at the children of Israel, every time they got away from God, they worshiped nature gods. They worshiped nature goddesses. They worshiped these gods that if you offered the sacrifice or do whatever, they, then they were going to bless you. Where did they worship? They worshiped among the groves. The groves are hmm, trees. Another nature god was Moloch. Moloch was a nature god of the Canaanites. This religious worship was associated with child sacrifice. Now, this is an image that they kind of made of Moloch, and you'll see that he has three eyes, and the middle eye is the all-seeing eye, which is where they claim that they have psychic abilities. And you'll see he's a golden cow. Well, you know, when the children of Israel came all, when the children of Israel were worshiping, uh, and Moses was up in the mountain, he came down, they were building a golden calf. I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday, uh, Chris James, and he was talking about the cow was used as a sacrifice to cleanse the priest. It was the ultimate sacrifice to cleanse the priest so that the priest could cleanse the other people. So basically, the pagans took the cow or the, this animal, the bull, and made it into a pagan worship. Now, where did this come from? Or where, where did this picture come from? Huh, I'm glad you asked because this was at 
the Colosseum in Rome. I'd like to read to you a statement that a lady made when she went to the Colosseum. Alexandra Clark recalls her visit to the Colosseum with her sister. We were so excited the day we decided to go to the Colosseum, but the moment we got there, the sight that greeted us was horrifying. Standing guard over the entrance was the colossal pagan statue of Moloch. It was placed in the prime spot so that everyone that entered into the Colosseum had to pass by it. I'd like to note that the Colosseum is property of the Vatican. So no one can put anything up there unless the Vatican okays it. Now again, what would happen is a Moloch, they would put his arms over the fire and his arms would get red hot. And then they put the children on top of the, the arms. And in some cases, they might even make a box in his chest and put the child in the chest. That was their sacrifices to this pagan God. But he was a, all about nature. Now, one of the things we do have as a pope today is a pope who is very interested in nature worship. Let me show you. The false religion will consist of nature worship. Pope Francis blessed pagan Pachamama, Pachamama statue in Vatican Garden. Okay, we talked about Pachamama, and you'll see the statue right there. And he, he, she is a nature goddess, and yet he's blessing her. Last October 4th, 2019, Pope Francis blessed the controversial pagan Pachamama statue in the Vatican Gardens as a special prelude to the opening of the Amazon Synod. Numerous bishops, cardinals, and theologians condemned the ceremony. I say that because I'm a Baptist, and when Catholics get very offended, if someone who's not a Catholic condemns their religion. I'm not condemning the religion. These people, bishops and cardinals, they're condemning what he did. Cardinal Burke went so far as saying that diabolical forces have entered St. Peter's Basilica. He supported the December 12th Day of Prayer and Reparation organized by some faithful Catholics and clergy in France. Burke uh, likewise said something very grave happened during the special assembly of the Bishop Synod for the Amazon religion. An idol Pachamama was introduced into St. Peter's Basilica, the figure of a demonic force. Again, I'm not saying that. A bishop was saying that. A cardinal was saying that. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshiped his image. So, as you've been seeing, we've been talking about how God is judging the elemental of earth. In our next session, we'll talk about the other elementals. <laughs>